冬天一到尽头，真是好的消息。温暖的春风就要吹醒大地。恭喜恭喜恭喜你呀！恭喜恭喜恭喜你！ Let me move to talk a little about this coming year, the year of tiger. So, as you know, we have twelve zodiacs, twelve、uh, animals based to the Chinese zodiac. And twenty twenty two is the year of tiger, and it's a year of water tiger. So it started actually on first of February. 2022, and lasting to 21st of January 2023, and you can see these animals actually、uh, come with a particular order. Okay, so start with rat being the first animal, and then end with pig as the last of the twelve animal, and the tiger is ranked the third in the twelve year cycle. Of the tiger, so the years of tiger, you know, including, for example, nineteen fifty, nineteen sixty two, nineteen seventy four, nineteen eighty six, nineteen ninety eight, nine two thousand ten, and two thousand twenty two, two thousand thirty four, etc. So it's like twelve years, right? Every twelve years, you will come around. But I also mentioned that we actually is the year of water tiger. So why there's Water tiger. This is because in the Chinese philosophy, ancient Chinese, see there are five different elements that is really important and have a huge impact on how we understand our life. So, what are these five elements? So, the first one is Tu, means earth, ah,、uh, and then the second element is Jing, that is metal. The third element, Shui, water. And then fourth element, wood. Okay, and the final element, fire, 火 So you know, 金木水火土 So these are the five elements, very important in Chinese culture. It not only give us the sense of you know relate to how we see direction, well being, philosophy. So it has some kind of impact. On everything we do, so that also have an impact on how we see the different zodiacs. So in reality, it's every sixty years a full cycle is completed, because you know you have the water tiger now, but then in the next twelve years that's gonna be a wood tiger, right? Then the fire tiger, earth tiger, and the metal tiger. So in total, it lasts sixty years to complete the full cycle. Now here, this shows you the full calendar.、Uh, if you have family and friends who were born in the year of Tiger, you can find out exactly <laughs> where they will fit into. So you can see here.、Um, typically, Chinese New Year will start in January and February, so it kind of always change a little bit year on year because it's based on the lunar calendar. And we are here, right? So this is the World Tiger in 2022. And you can see the previous water tiger would be in for those people who were born in 1962, so exactly 60 years. And I don't know actually how many of you or you you have family and friends who were born in the year of tiger. Maybe later you can tell me、uh, a little bit about them because according to the Chinese、uh, zodiac. You know, the, with the uncommon courage and confidence, people who were born in year of tiger, they are natural leaders, and they can always, you know, turn ideas into practice. And they are also very generous and passionate, and holding a strong sense of justice. I, I don't personally have any friends or family members who were born in year of tiger. So if you know some people, then you can let me know. And then also, you know, if there's if they meet the weak or see anything unfair, the tiger will stand up and offer help. And tigers are such persons who dare to love and hate, 
And if a friend does something wrong, they will point out directly. And this daring nature can also make them a little bit rebellious, a little bit stubborn. Huh? So sometimes it's not very easy for them to take on others' advice. So there's a little bit of personality trait about those who were born in the year of Tiger. And then you can see here we have the, you know, animal tiger here. And then this is the Chinese character tiger hu. Um, so tigers in the Chinese culture considered to be, you know, brave and forceful, cruel, and sometimes terrifying, right? And it is the symbol of power and lordness in Chinese culture. So you can see why, I mean, the, the, the reason is quite interesting. If you will look at the pattern on the forehead of the tiger, and you can notice here, this is a Chinese character, which is king uh, or emperor. So in ancient times, because of the pattern, uh, it's very much similar to the Chinese character, king or emperor. People usually compare emperors or kings with the tigers, thinking they are really strong and for power, but can be also terrifying, <laughs> okay? So we actually have a saying in Chinese, ban jun ru ban hu, ban jun ru ban hu. So it means a company the king is like a company the tiger. So this is talking about the servants uh, who work in, in the, for the emperor, you actually really need to be very careful. You need to think carefully about what you say, how you act and behave, because you never know if the emperor gets really upset, you might lose your life. So you have to be very careful. And also tigers are considered as a protection god for kids, uh, for children. So parents would prepare, as we can see, hats, as well as shoes uh, with tiger designs for their babies. And here you can see some very traditional ones, uh, really pretty handmade with a bit of um, sewing and all the modern ones, right? You can see the character is always there. Uh, no wonder we say the Chinese kids all become little emperors. We want them to be successful and powerful with the king of the tiger. Um, so this is very typical. Um, when the baby, for example, reaches a certain age. So when I say certain age, but for example, very symbolic, like a hundred days old, yeah, or one year old. So the parents will, you know, make this. And in the old days, all these are handmade. So it takes a lot of time, especially the shoes. So let's look at the shoes. So these are the shoes also, you know, in the shape of tiger head, okay. And you can see in the old days, you know, it's all sued. Usually, you know, you need a lot of skill uh, and a, a lot of time as well to, to make it something really, really beautiful. And of course, nowadays, no one really has so much time. So it kind of, it's a, in a way, it's a bit of a shame because it become very commercialized um, because kids also grow very quickly. So usually the parents will get a nice hat or a nice pair of uh, shoes as a symbolic gift, but it's just impossible to keep making <laughs> the hats and the shoes. And also, um, I just came across this uh, notebook, the Year of Tiger notebook, and it precisely has the shoes, um, you know, for the for the kids, and it's very symbolic. So actually, I think in the Sibyl in the Confucius Institute, we're getting some for our students. So hopefully, you know, you will like this cover and you, you can use it to practice Chinese characters. <laughs> okay. And modern days, there's one common expression become very, well, it become very viral, this expression in the last 10 years. It's called Tiger Mom, Hu Ma. So who is Hu Ma? What kind of, what kind of, uh, mother can be classified as Hu Ma. So if you look at the image on the right, you can see this mom, you know, expect the kids. So we have the subject written on the book. So study math, Tang Shi Song Zi. So the poetry from uh, Tang and Song Dynasty and Xue Qian Fu Dao. That means 
pre-school education. So all this happened before they go to primary school. And of course, English. And on top of that, they have to at least learn painting or violin, okay? So basically it's huge expectation and parents would expect their kids to perform not only well academically, but also on top of that, it's really important to have a talent, whether it be painting, dancing, dancing or music. This uh, expression, Gu Ma, actually uh, is based on this book. Uh, the, in the English name is called Battle Him of the Tiger Mom. So this was written by an American Chinese author. Her name is Amy Chua. And then she was, uh, she is actually a law professor at Yale University. So she wrote this book and the translation of the book is Hu Ma Zhan Ge. So Hu Ma, this concept then become, you know, popular in China. So in the book, this is a little bit about her memoir. So in the book, she talked about how she brought up or how she tried to, brought, to bring up her two daughters in a very traditional Chinese way, meaning being really, really strict and always push them to do their best. So in the book, it's very interesting. She talked about how it worked quite well with her elder daughter who play amazing you know, piano and also doing really well academically. But then it didn't really work out very well with her second daughter, the relationship between her and her daughter just went really, really bad. Maybe her daughter was born in the year of the tiger. <laughs> uh, and so then she reflects really hard on um, how to, you know, adjust and adapt her um, approach to raise, raising her own children. And the book was really, really influential and actually very controversial in America. And some of the people saying some of the things that she did in, she mentioned in the book was like child abuse. <laughs> While then she did, she, she kind of defended herself, say this is just, I want my kids to do the best and try as, as hard as they can. And then based on that, actually then this concept, Hu Ma, become some kind of inspiration for a lot of TV shows and soap operas. So in 2015, we have this mainland Chinese comic drama actually. Uh, called the Tiger Mom. So in, in the Chinese title, you can say it's Hu Ma, but Mao Ba. Uh, so Tiger Mom, Cat Dad. <laughs> so why Cat Dad? Because Cat meant to be also part of, well, Tiger is part of Cat, right? But Cat here, it means, you know, it's nothing fierce or it's very, you know, timid, that kind of image. So it's really talking about the Tiger Mom is really driving the whole education how their daughter meant to be educated. So if for any of you are curious and interested in the Chinese education system uh, or about this um, family relationship, but also one child policy, I think this is quite interesting to look at. And finally, I want to teach you one simple uh, Chinese idiom. Uh, very, very, we use it very regularly and it's easy to remember because it's ma ma hu hu. Horse, horse, tiger, tiger. <laughs> so why horse, horse and tiger, tiger? So first, I want to show you an, an image. So what do you see? What do you think that is? Is it a horse or <laughs> is it a tiger? So I came across one video and I thought it did quite well to tell the Mama Huhu story, okay? So I'm gonna play this video and let's see whether you like it or not. The Mama Hoo Hoo Story Once upon a time in China, there was a so-so average painter. Let's just say he was pretty far off from the Mona Lisa. And he was the laughing stock of the town. Nobody ever had a clue what he was painting. And one day he was off in the square, creating his usual disaster. When suddenly, a friend showed up. What are you painting, said the friend. Can't you see? 
said the indignant painter. I've painted one of the most glorious works of art. It kind of looks like a weird ma, which means horse in Chinese. Then the friend wandered off. But the painter, not to be discouraged, continued on his masterpiece. Then suddenly, another friend showed up. Oh, golly gee whiz, what on earth are you painting? Oh, can't you see? It's one of the most glorious developments in modern art. Oh, hot diggity dang. That there just looks like a... Ho, which means tiger in Chinese. Not you too, moaned the hack of a painter. Then suddenly, the other friend showed up. I disagree. It totally looks like a ma. You got eyes, bucko? That totally looks like a ho. Seriously, who put the hot pepper in your fried rice? It looks like ma. No, it don't. Ho, ma, ho, ma, ma. Hoo hoo mama hoo hoo mama hoo hoo mama hoo hoo mama hoo hoo let's just say the argument went on for quite some time mama hoo hoo mama hoo hoo but no one had an idea if it was a horse or a tiger and pretty soon across the land when people wanted to describe something between two extremes the average the so-so people would say mama hoo hoo Horse, horse, tiger, tiger. So next time when you're not happy or sad, say, Mama, hoo hoo. The end. Okay, so Mama, hoo hoo. As you can see, it just means so so, ah,、uh, something average. So it's a very useful expression. So sometimes if you don't want to, ah,、uh, comment too much, you can just say, Mama, hoo, Mama, hoo hoo. Okay, so I thought this video actually taught the expression quite well, but this is not the actual story. Okay, so for every Chinese idiom, we do have an actual. A lot of them are based on historical stories, so we do have a real story where the mama hoo is come from. So I'm gonna explain that to you. So it is there was a painter. Ah,、uh, he he was painting, and one day. He started painting a tiger, and then his friend visited, so he got interrupted. And then he had a bit of chat with his friend, and his friend suggested, "Um,、oh, I see you're painting a tiger, but maybe you should try a horse." And then his friend left. And then this guy thought about his friend's suggestion and thinking, "Yeah, I can paint a horse." So, but instead of starting a brand new Paint, uh, painting. He just carried on. He's like, oh, it doesn't matter. I just got continue doing what I'm doing. So it ended up with this. So this is the outcome of his careless style of painting. Started with tiger and then ended up with a horse body. He has two sons. So the elder son passed through one day and asked daddy, "So what is this?" And he said, "Oh, it's a horse." And the elder son remembered. Oh, okay, now I know. And then the younger son also passed through the painting. Asked, "Dad, what is that?" And then he said, "This time it's a tiger." Because I think in his mind he's also very confused what he was drawing. And then one day, the older son, when he passed the jungle and saw a tiger, he thought it was a horse. So he wanted to ride the horse. We all know what happened. It, it was not good at all. What happened to the child? And then with the second son, and one day the servant actually brought a horse to the home, and the, the younger son thought that was a tiger, so he killed the the horse. So the household ended up losing one son. And also, you know, waste all the money, bought a new horse, and being killed. And later on, everyone called him Mr. Maku, um, Maku, horse and tiger. So when you put horse and tiger together, Maku, or、uh, we also say Mama Huhu to emphasize it means 
someone doing something really, really careless, uh, not paying attention at all. So this is the essence of the story is don't be mahu. Please do not be mahu or mama hu hu. Okay. So it's I think a little bit tiger mom spirit coming out. Always try your best and to do the best you can. Okay, so this leads me to the end of my talk. So I will So I will give everyone a 早年, we say early year because the, the new year is not here yet. But I'm going to say 拜年, Yeah, I wish everyone a really, really happy new year. And just to conclude, so we've seen the story, the legend story to help us understand why what you can, different symbols and different, you know, signs and red color during the Chinese New Year. We also talked a little bit about food. I have nine lucky foods. Really strongly recommend people to have a try. And of course, finally, we talked a little bit about tiger and the zodiac and also some common expressions related to tiger. So hopefully you enjoyed today's talk. And if you have any questions, just let me know. 冬天一到尽头，真是好的消息，温暖的春风就要吹醒大地。恭喜恭喜恭喜你呀，恭喜恭喜恭喜你。恭喜恭喜恭喜你呀